everyone and welcome to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name's Alexis and today I want to show you how to make my delicious homemade tomato ketchup. As I just mentioned, today I want to share with you how to make my tomato ketchup on the hob. Now this has been requested by one of my viewers. I think last year I made tomato ketchup in the slow cooker and I asked if anybody would like to see it on the hob and one person said yes. Thank you to that one person. So I thought I'd show you it today. We're having fish cakes for tea tonight and fish cakes are delicious with this tomato ketchup and if you'd like to see my recipe for fish cakes then please let me know in the comments below and I will make those for you but yes today I thought I'd show you how to make this so here is how to make my tomato ketchup on the hob so the first thing I'm going to do is make a bouquet garnet and a bouquet garnet is where you keep all the herbs and spices that you don't want to fall into your tomato ketchup but you still want the flavour from them so for this I've got one I'm going to use one teaspoon of ground mace and I'm just going to put that on there and then I'm going to use uh, one teaspoon or probably about half a teaspoon of ground mixed spice in the recipe it does say all spice but I've actually run out of all spice so I'm going to try it with ground mixed spice and see how that is and then I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of uh, cloves now cloves are very strong so you don't need too much of that um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add six peppercorns to this as well one two three four five six and then i'm going to fold the cloth that i've put all these spices on up and then what i'm going to do hopefully is tie it round with an elastic band and once i start cooking the ketchup i shall be putting that in later so that is my like spice bag for the ketchup that I'm going to be using later in the recipe. So next, I'm going to put a large saucepan, if I can turn my hob on, on a high heat, and I'm gonna add some oil to that pan as well. So I'm just gonna get the oil, sorry about that. And then I'm just gonna put like a teaspoon or two of oil into the base of the pan, and I'm just gonna heat this pan up. L. So the pan is really nice and hot now and I can hear it sizzling away beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one onion to the base of the pan, like so. And I'm going to fry this until it, become, until it softens so it becomes a bit translucent, see-through. So I'm just going to continue to fry this now. So the onion has started to soften beautifully now and it's started to come see-through and clear as well. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in two cloves of garlic to this as well. I've just sliced two cloves of garlic. Oh, and I've peeled and chopped the onion so it was very fine, very small pieces as well. So yeah, I don't like to add the garlic in too early because the onion takes a little while longer to cook and the garlic always tends to burn if you put it in too early. It only really needs a couple of minutes in the pan. So this pan is getting really hot now. So what I'm going to do is just turn it down slightly. Um, and the onions are cooking beautifully in here as well. And now what I'm going to do, that's been in for a few moments of garlic, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in two tins of chopped tomatoes. So, I'm going to add another one in as well. I have tried this with fresh tomatoes as well, but I do think chopped tomatoes are better. They're just more gungy if that makes sense they're a bit bulkier as well and, and you have to chop a lot of tomatoes and i wanted to make this as quick and easy as possible for everybody so yeah so that's why i use tin tomatoes but you can try it with chopped tomatoes as well you probably need about 800 grams um, of, ch of uh, 
tomatoes from the supermarket and I choose the very ripe ones, the, re like, the more expensive ones basically because they have a lot more flavour. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar as well. So I'm just going to add this in to my ketchup mixture. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my bouquet garnet in, or bouquet garnet, and I'm just going to put it on the side, like so. And then I'm going to turn this heat down, because it's bubbling away nicely, to a very low heat. And I'm going to leave this to simmer now for about 30 minutes. So this has been on the hob for about well a good half an hour now and it started to thicken beautifully um, where the steam's rising off it it's actually taking some of the moisture away with it as well and it started to thicken really nicely so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove it from the heat and just leave it to cool so I'm just going to simply push it over there and turn the heat off and leave it to cool for probably about 30 minutes now now what I'm going to do is I am going to remove the bouquet garnet from the ketchup, from the mixture, from all the ingredients. And I am going to add two tablespoons of maple syrup into this. So I'm just going to add one and then two. That's gone in, so that's lovely. And the maple syrup just gives it a bit of sweetness without having too much sugar in it as well. And then I'm going to add in one teaspoon of smoked paprika. And this just adds a lot of flavour and it tastes absolutely delicious. And then I'm going to add in one teaspoon of ground sweet cinnamon. Um, you can use ordinary cinnamon if you can't get ground sweet cinnamon. And in the recipe I've actually said to use ordinary cinnamon as well. But I thought I'd try today um, ground sweet cinnamon because we have it in the cupboard and it does make things taste that little bit sweeter so I thought I'd just give it a try and see how it tastes. So I'm just going to mix all of these together and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the ketchup into my Nutribullet cup or put the ketchup into my Nutribullet cup and then I'm going to blend all of these ingredients together until they're all nice and smooth. Um, and I know this seems like a really long process to make ketchup but I normally make this when like I'm making a roast dinner because I can keep it on the hob and I can just keep an eye on it so I start this before I start the roast dinner and then I just I just when like the roast is all in the oven I then um, deal with making the smarter ketchup so yeah it's a great one um, but it does take time to make so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this onto my Nutribullet and blend it for probably about 30 seconds to a minute now. <laughs> so this has all been blended now until it's smooth and that's what it should look like, that's the consistency it should look like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this back into my saucepan again and I'm going to put this back onto a low heat for another 30 minutes. And I know this is, I know I said that this is a really long process, but bear with me because the effort is worth the results. Honestly, this is the most tasty um, ketchup I've ever had, to be honest with you. So I love it and my family love it as well. So yeah, it's definitely worth the effort. So the ketchup has been on the hob for well over half an hour now. I left it for a little bit longer, but it started to thicken beautifully. So if I just show you, it's really thick and really gloopy now. And it looks a bit like tomato puree, and that's the consistency that you want. And I also forgot to say that as it's cooking, you might want to come back every so often to the hob just to um, get the bits that get stuck on the side of the pan off and just tap them back in. It's all good stuff, so don't worry too much. If it goes a bit lumpy, it's fine. But yeah, it's, this is beautiful ketchup. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to remove the pan from the heat and leave it to cool until it's completely cool now. 
So I've left the tomato ketchup to cool until it's completely cool. And then what I've done is I've got two sterile jars here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ketchup into the sterile jars. Um, and yeah, just keep putting it into the sterile jars. As I said, this is a deles delicious ketchup, delicious ketchup. Delicious ketchup to have with chips. Um, it's great with... Uh, fish cakes it's great with burgers it's really yummy my family love it i've given it as presents before as well so if you want to make this and give it as a gift then it's a beautiful gift i have to say it only keeps for about two weeks in the fridge though and then you will start to probably get some mold on it so it doesn't keep for that long so you do have to eat it within a certain amount of time but you can also freeze it as well because all of the ingredients in here are freezable. Um, I would normally use one large jar but I've actually run out of large jars so I'm literally using two smaller jars but they've nearly filled it. This one isn't so full but the other one is very full and this is nearly done now so that's it. That is my homemade tomato ketchup on the hob. So that's how you make my delicious homemade tomato ketchup. And that recipe, I will link in the description box below for you. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to leave any comments below. Do you like making homemade tomato ketchup? Or will you consider it after watching this video? I'd love to know. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you soon. Bye.